I'll tell you my opinion up front, and then we're gonna we're gonna dive into the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. So, I I agree with with Cleveland. I think quick mixing is very important, but I think Cleveland is actually being a little you know a little conservative. I I, I actually will take this to the next step next step further. I don't play second verses or second choruses rarely ever, rarely ever. I'm a I'm a first verse first chorus person and out like almost always or just a chorus and out or maybe just this one part and out I mix extremely fast and there's exceptions and we're going to talk about everything and I'm going to tell you everything all my opinions everything I know all my thoughts on it and everything but I'm actually on Cleveland's side but even more extreme okay call me DJ ADHD or whatever you want to call me but it, it matters and it makes a huge difference. And I'm gonna explain this to you, okay? So I think it's interesting to take it from the perspective of objections, right? What are the quick mixing objections? And I, I, I perused all these comments and, I, and, I, and I, I wanted to pick out all the objections, what people were saying, like there are reasons why they don't quick mix or they think it you know doesn't work in certain situations or it doesn't, whatever, you know what I mean? All the objections. So the first one I saw, is, and I saw a lot, is people get mad when you mix out too fast. A lot of people said that. No, bro, why would you mix? You're gonna quick mix. People get mad. You quick, you, you mix out quick. They're gonna get pissed off. People get pissed off. They'll, they'll turn around and look at you. What are you doing? You know, like it doesn't work. You gotta, you, you don't wanna piss off the crowd. You know, you're not, you're not, th those aren't DJs out there. Those are regular people. And to that, I will say, there's the only way a crowd will turn around and get mad at you is if you didn't read them properly. The major keys to quick mixing, which I will get into later, is, you know, one of them is knowing what parts of the song to play. What parts of the song bang? And what, what parts don't? And I think that's a big thing that a lot of people get wrong. If you mix quick and people turn around and yell at you, you mixed it too quick. You didn't mix the part that they wanted to hear, right? That would be the number one thing they would turn around and yell, for, you know, you didn't mix the thing. It would either be, you didn't mix the part that they wanted. You didn't play the part they wanted to hear, or you went into a song. Your next song was just not a good song, not, not a good programming song to go into, right? It was just a trash song. It was a, it was a dip in energy or it just didn't work, right? One of those two things. And that's it. That's the only way a crowd will get mad at you. Otherwise, you can quick mix your dick off and you'll be fine. And everyone, everyone's going to love it. You, the, the, the key to quick mixing is playing the good parts of every song. That's literally what you do. You just play the good parts of every song. I'll give you an example. At a time, a crowd yelled at me for quick mixing, right? Um, years and years and years ago, I was playing Spice Girls Wannabe, okay? I, I mixed it out after the first course. And a couple girls turn around and yelled at me, what are you doing? And I came to realize that they wanted to hear the rap at the end, that all the girls love that rap at the end. There's a, I don't even, I don't remember the lyrics. I can't rap it for you, but it's like, it's the third, I believe it's the third verse of Spice Girls wannabe. It's like a rap. So here's a story about you or something like that. It's like some shit like that. Right? So from then on, I would do the first, I would do the first verse, the first chorus, then I'd skip to that rap, do one more chorus, and then mix out. So that would be a song I played two verses, two choruses. No one's ever yelled at me again because I played the two main parts. No one's ever yelled at me for not playing that second verse because no one gives a shit about it. You got to know what they give a shit about, you know? Ice Ice Baby is a great example. Everybody knows the stop, collaborate, and listen part. But nobody knows that second verse. I mean, unless you were there, maybe. But you know, now that the party is jumping, it's like a, it's like a, you know, Detroit, like, have you ever played Ice Ice Baby? Went into the first, a second verse. Don't you can't tell me that the second verse came on and the crowd got hype and they're woo when the second verse came out. It's never happened to you in your entire life. You know why? Because no one cares about the second verse. No one cares about it. Get out. Get to the next part. Get to the next song. Keep it pushing. You know. So people get mad at you when you do it. It, 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 it's, it means you, you didn't, you know, same thing if you play a full song, right? If you, if, if, if the reason why you would play the entire song of Shout or Paradise by Dashboard Light is because you know that everybody wants to play, wants to sing along to every part of that song. Every part of that song is like they act out the whole Paradise by Dashboard Light and sing back and forth and all that shit. 
You know what I mean? So you you play that whole song because you know that's what they want. Same thing with quick mixing. You know, you play just the first verse or just the first verse and that last rap at the end with Spice Girls because you know what they that's what they want. Rule applies for everything. But the funny thing is, is generally speaking, most songs, people only give a shit about the chorus and maybe a verse and that's it. That's 98% of all songs. It's a fact. And we'll get more examples in a second. Next objection. It only works with younger people and newer music. That's wrong. It's just wrong. The same rule applies for old, new, you know, younger people, older people, newer music, older music, whatever. Every song there is, there's popular parts of that song. There's very few songs where the whole song is the popular part. Most are just popular parts, whether it's an old song or a new song. You just got to know which parts people want to hear. Mix those parts in, play those parts, and then keep it moving. An old person will keep, as long as they hear the parts they want to hear, they're going to keep their two-step going. They're going to keep dancing. They're going to keep having a great time. It's a fact. They don't care you mix early. They don't care if you quick mix. If anything, you're giving the people more. If you're quick mixing, you're playing more songs. You're giving them a better experience. Like, what's more fun? Singing one song at the top of your lungs or singing 10? You go see your favorite band in a concert, right? Go see your favorite band in a concert. They come out, they play three whole songs. Are you going to be a little disappointed? Oh, I wish they played more. You're going to want them to play as many as possible. You want three encores, right? It's your favorite band. You're there, you're there to have a good time. You want to hear as many songs as possible. It's the same thing. This is a big one here. A lot of people said this in different ways, right? They kind of alluded to like, you know, quick mixing only, you should only quick mix if the crowd in front of you isn't into it. You know, like once the crowd starts, you know, like, you know, if it's working, keep it going. But then like, you know, if you see that the crowd's, you know, not really liking the song, then quick mix. That's what quick mix is for, right? Even um, uh, Brian S. Red, his quote in his video was, if it works, leave it alone. That's his quote. If it works, leave it alone. And this is crazy to me because especially he's an OG. This guy has been DJing since like, I, I don't even know, like World War II or something, like long time, long time this guy's been DJing, okay? And this is the most elementary thing you can think in, in, in the world. This is so elementary to me. Be, it, it, like DJs, if you learn anything from this episode, all right, or any, if this is the only video you ever watch of my channel or something, this is so, so important. You have to listen to me on this, okay? You never want to have that mindset. If it works, leave it alone. The song's working. All right, let it go for another verse. That is, that's like, okay, uh, my car works great. Do I need to get an oil change? No, I'm not going to get an oil change till it breaks down. Wait till it breaks down. <laughs> right? It works fine. My car starts right up. I think I need an oil change in like 400 miles or something like that. It's getting close. It still starts right up. Let me, let me risk it for the biscuit. Let me just keep driving it till it breaks down. You know what? My teeth are white. My teeth are all right, I feel like. So I don't need to brush them until they get, to, I mean, once my teeth get to like this, then I'll brush them, right? Then you brush them. Just wait. Wait until they start to rot, then you brush your teeth. See where I'm getting at with this? Just because the song is working and everyone's singing along and having a good time doesn't mean you shouldn't change it. It means you give them more. Bring it up the next level with the next song. You got them now. They're having a good time. You know how you take it to another level and another level? Hit them with another one and another one and another one. Don't wait for the crowd to die before you quick mix. Don't say, oh, I dropped this song and it's working great because you're still in the first verse and then you play it to the third and then when you're at the third verse, you're in the middle of the third verse, people are walking off your dance floor and you're like, oh shit, all right, well, I guess I got to change it up now. Now, now. now you just shot yourself in the foot. Now your crowd is dissipating and you have to like go on defense and like and, and, and quick mix another song in and hopefully that works and you know what I mean? Why? Why wait for that? Your crowd's bumping. Give them another one. Give them another one. Get those new oohs. It's the most delicious thing in the world. It's my favorite thing with DJing. When you play a song and everybody's like, whoa, when you get the ooh, 
I want as many ooze as possible, as many new ooze as possible during every single dance set I do, no matter where I'm at. And if I have a great song that's working because I'm playing the good part of the song, I'm already thinking of the next song that's going to work because this song's working and I can't wait to play that next song. That's what you want to do. Just think ahead and, and, and give them more. Don't wait for it to die. You know, it doesn't make, it, it makes no sense. It's a, ter it's a, it's a terrible idea. Trust me on this DJs. Now, another misconception I've heard is I don't want to play all my bangers early. And this is an easy one to solve. And I think this is like the least bit of most DJs problem because what I've heard a lot of, especially when I see DJs, like older DJs that will comment and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm not in, I don't like, I don't think, I think beat mixing is overrated. I don't do that. I think programming and musical knowledge is key, right? You know, anybody who doesn't mix or whatever, you know, they all say, hey, listen, I know my shit though when it comes to music and programming. And I'm sure you do. So this shouldn't be a problem. You, you spending your bangers early shouldn't be a problem. You should have all the music in the world. The easiest way to prevent this from happening is to have crates that are stacked. You have to have crates that are stacked with hundreds and hundreds of songs. There has been tens of millions of hit songs that, that's come out. It's unreal how many songs that are out there. Unreal. Not just the top 40 hits. There's underground hits. There's, there's songs that hit the top 40 but still work to dance. You know, there's songs that never hit the top 40 that still work to dance. There's, there's so much music out there. You just have to dig, dig, dig and be stacked. I, like, I personally play on average between 150 and 200 songs. I like to, like on, at a wedding set if I'm doing like a, you know, two and a half hour, three hour ish set like all together. So I, so I try and keep double that. You know what I mean? Like whatever you typically play, you know, or if you want to start quick mixing, you know, kind of just do the math. You want hundreds and hundreds of songs, all bangers in your crates. You could just go to bam, bam. You never run out of anything to play. Never get that Serato face that everybody talks about. That's the key. That's really the key to this. Even like Mike Walter always said, you never hold back, never hold back. Always give them everything. You know what I mean? Like, like never hold back. And I agree with that. Don't save nothing for the end. Because like once you have them, you can get away with more stuff at the end. You know what I mean? Once you have your crowd and they're jamming and they're just singing the top of their lungs and you, you know, when you have them at the point, you can just play whatever, right? And they're going to dance. Like, you know, you get, so you play all your bangers up front, you get them to that point, then you can get away with more stuff Then you can play other, you know what I mean? But if you have nothing but bangers to play all night, their heads are going to explode. Like, you know what I mean? Like that is the key. So stack your crates. If you want to see what's in my crates, I have them below, but I highly recommend do your own research too. You know what I mean? Do your own experiments. Everywhere's different. You know, definitely just, just sit down and listen to music, have a good time with it and just stack your shit, stack your shit. Now there are exceptions to quick mixing. I'll give you mine. Because that's another thing I saw all over the comments. Oh, well, you know, especially in like Cleveland's videos. Like, oh, whoa, 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 what about this? What about this? What do you mean? You quick mix everything? Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's like, holy shit, what are you, crazy? Right? There's exceptions. Here are my exceptions, okay? And mine are a little more extreme than Cleveland's. Four exceptions. Slow songs. Must plays on the couple list. Not like play if possibles. Must plays. Like, they're, they're the, the songs I got to play no matter what. The songs that are important to them, right? Opening song of a dance set and anthems. And I put sometimes, right? But I don't mean I'm playing the whole song, all these. So what I mean by this, slow songs, I typically play the full slow song. Every once in a while, I might cut one short depending on the situation. If I don't have a lot of time, I'm trying to get right back into it or something. I don't know. But most of the time, I'll just play a full slow song. Couple must plays, second verse in a chorus. I'll, I'll let it go an extra one, right? If I play like the song that was on their must play list and I see them out there and they're singing and dancing, I'll leave it on longer, right? But I don't want to leave it on so long where people are like, all right, you know, because I'm telling you, you get to the third, you can't tell me you, you don't get to these third verses, third courses, and these people are even more hype. The, 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 the excitement doesn't build, okay? Very few songs where the excitement builds. Shout, the excitement builds till the end, okay? There's very few songs. Typical songs, they're not going to be more excited at the third course, the third verse. They're going to be less excited. So I won't let it get to that point. You know, I try and really feel it out. Sometimes a couple's must play. I'll play all the way through depending on the song. But most of the time, I'll just probably leave it on a second chorus, second verse. So it's not too fast. So they get to hear it. And then I keep it pushing. Opening song. Now, this is something uh, that I always do. Generally always do that. I kind of recommend. So when I open a dance floor, right, let's say like, you know, or, you know, we're done dinner, whatever. All right, I, you know, dance floor is now open and I drop 
September by Earth, Wind & Fire, okay? Most of the time, I will leave that song on for a second verse, second chorus, because it takes people a little bit to like kind of, you know, walk out to the dance floor, do the little sexy walk out the dance floor, come out there, right? You know, and, and generally speaking, you know, by the time the chorus hits and everything, people are still coming out to the dance floor. And I don't like to like just change the song now that while people are still coming out because, you know, the, like some that might give somebody a reason to, you know, <laughs> turn around and walk away, you know, like just do a whole 180. All right, we out. We gone. <laughs> You know, just because you change the song there. So usually, you know, the first song, my anchor to my set, I'll leave on a little longer, let the dance floor kind of build up everything. And then, you know, as it's building up, I'm kind of analyzing, seeing who's out there and seeing where I want to go. And then it's taking it from there. But then once I start mixing, I'm, I'm ripping. I'm ripping through songs, just playing the good parts, right? And then when it comes to anthems, what I mean by anthems, uh, you know, they mentioned their videos like Sweet Caroline, Don't Stop Believing, Shout, Paradise by Dashboard Light, stuff like that, right? Like the songs you leave on forever, right? Um, I generally play those all the way through. Uh, I'll say that like uh, shook me, you shook me all night long or don't stop believing. I used to play all the way through, but I stopped. I actually have like different ways to get in and out of them and it works fine. Nobody gets pissed off. You know, like those songs, I, either they're getting played out or, you know, there's not, they're kind of really repetitive if you really think about it, you know, Paradise by Dashboard Light, Shout, always all the way through. There's nothing you could do because there's two, there's, there's different, you know, parts of the song, you know, that they want to hear. So they want to hear all those different parts. It's not just like a repetitive chorus. So there's exceptions when it comes to anthems and stuff like that, but other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm moving fast. I'm, I'm just moving fast. And there's a couple keys to this. And I mentioned a couple of them earlier, but I want to drive them home. Because if you're having trouble quick mixing, if you tried quick mixing in the past and you didn't get good results, you know, people got mad at you for mixing too quick or whatever. It just didn't feel, you know, chances are you might have missed one of these keys. And I think this is like the, the major keys with this. Okay. So number one, knowing what parts of song the crowd wants to hear. 100%. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. You just got to know. Maybe it's the whole song they want to hear, or maybe it's just the first verse and chorus. Maybe it's just a chorus. Good example of that. Just a friend by Biz Marquee. I play it all the time at weddings. But you know what I don't play? Any verses. Have you ever met a girl? Well, I like the verse, but it's just not, it's not good for a dance floor in my opinion. Like, you know what I mean? I just played a chorus. You, you got what I, right? Everyone sings along we, and that's it. I'm out. One course, I'm out. The best part and keep it moving. The next thing is technique, okay? In order to quick mix, you're moving very fast, right? Sometimes just playing one course. So you got to be able to move fast. You got to be really, really good at mixing. You got to be able to mix like, you know, with your eyes closed. So obviously you know, practice mixing, practice different techniques. I do agree with what Brian S. Red said, where he said, like, you know, if you, if you mix out, if you beat mix, do an eight bar beat mix. I think what he meant was like, if you do like an eight bar beat mix, for example, at the second chorus, every single time, then the people are going to be predicting your mixes and it's going to get repetitive. And I agree with that. You want to ch change it up, you know, drop things on the one, uh, you know, d do beat mixes sometimes, sometimes do the thing where you kind of like just echo out and then drop something out of nowhere, uh, tone plays, word plays, you know, things like that. You know, you, you definitely change up your mixing style. So it's like always kind of something different when you can. And your mix has got to make sense. And, you know, you got to like figuring out what you want to play next, like has a lot to do with like how the crowd is vibing and what you're playing at the time. And a lot of times if you're in a certain genre, you know, a lot, a lot of DJs say, oh, you know, I'm open format. And then they literally just recklessly go from hip hop to metal to like you know just the most rec country to the like to, like like at, like no rhyme or reason just mixing this genre into this genre and this genre and that's not like that's not a good idea you, you want to make everything kind of make sense and make flow like and flow and you want to have like different ways to kind of cross over from one genre to the next i'll give you an example when I'm in, if I get down to the 70s, you know, maybe I'll do like the Blink-180, you know, all the small things, right? You know, sugar, we're going down, right? That sort of thing, right? I'm, I'm in that kind of set. I think it's kind of a bad idea. Like, it, it can work, but when you're in a set like that and people are jamming and singing every word, if you just out of nowhere go into a hip-hop song after that, they're kind of going to be like, oh, because they were in rock mode, you know? They were kind of like in... They're rocking out. And then all of a sudden you just drop this crazy hip hop song 
And the, you can bring the energy down doing that, right? That's like an open format fail. The way to do it, or the way that works for me, anyway, you do what you like, but the way that works for me is like, I try and use different crossover tracks. So if I'm in that modern rock kind of, you know, or, you know, 2000s rock kind of era in the 70s or whatever, 80 BPMs, and I want to get to, you know, any type of hip hop, something I'll do a lot is I have a We Will Rock You acapella out. It's still a rock song, okay? And that's another song that I literally just play no, no, there is a verse in there. Yeah, so it's a verse and chorus. Verse and chorus and out. But it, it basically goes, um, it starts with the, the chorus, we will rock you. Then it goes to the first verse, and then it's acapella out, we will rock you. I'll play that. It's like 80-something BPMs on the acapella out. Now it's an acapella out. We will, we, I'll mix in like teach me how to Dougie or something or bye, bye, bye or whatever, wherever I want to go. You know, that's kind of in that realm. And now it works because you're kind of using a sing-along kind of crossover record, but then you're taking that acapella out and you're putting a hip hop beat underneath of it. And it just, it's, it sounds good. It's like, you know, like we will, and you hear that teach me how to Dougie beat and people start hitting the Dougie. It's like, oh, okay. And now you're crossing over into that next genre. You know, that's kind of how you truly be open format. You got to think things out that way. And if you, if you, if you really think your mixes out and try and like make them make sense that way and flow right, not just play random things and be really proficient at mixing. So the beats are on, the key is right, all that stuff. People aren't going to yell at you. They're going to actually give you a new ooh. They're going to oh! They're going to be excited. They're not going to know what's coming next. They're not going to be able to predict you. They won't be able to predict you. Being unpredictable is so huge. Because that's what gives you the, you know, excitement. It's like, oh, shit, I didn't see that coming. If you see it coming, you're not going to get excited about it, right? If I go in the next room and I go through the closet and I see what my girl got me for Christmas, <laughs> now I predicted what she got me. Now I know what she got me. I'm not going to be very excited about it, right? I'm excited. I like, can't wait to get it. But the day of, it's not going to be like, oh, my God. Like, I'm not going to go, whoa. I'm not going to get an ooh when I open up that present because I kind of already seen it coming, you know? Same thing with mixing. And then the last thing, of course, is having and knowing the music. You know, you got to know a lot of music. And I think that's something that most of us all have. Even the DJs that don't mix or you're still on the fence about this. You don't agree with everything I'm saying. I'm sure you know your music. You know how to program. You've been doing this a long time. And this is something you got down. So if you got this, it's really just the technical side of it. And it's really just knowing what's, what parts of the songs work, you know. And if you always play songs all the way through you know, then I would just say, try and think and try and like kind of analyze, you know, where people are most excited when you're playing these songs all the way through. And then like try and start focusing on narrowing it down to just those parts. You can't just, if you want to start quick mixing and you don't quick mix at all right now, you can't just jump right into it. You can't just go zero, zero to a hundred and just start quick mixing. It's not going to work. It, 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 it takes practice. It takes time. It takes a lot of time to actually build up the confidence to like quickly go through these songs and, and, and play more music. Because if, if you long mix now, you play this many songs. If you quick mix, you're going to have to play probably double, maybe closer to triple. So there's going to be a lot of songs you don't normally play that you might not be confident in playing. And I get that, you know, if you, know, you never play this one song it's like all right i hope it works you know and you gotta so it's it's a process you have to slowly just do it just just think about what you do now and see if you can make it quicker and think about it to yourself you don't gotta tell anybody but think about it. just sit down and be like you know what every time i play this song and go into this song i kind of lose energy at this point and maybe i should just mix that out early you know just look at it subjectively that, like that you know like just put the ego to the side and just think like you know can i do this better and slowly do it a little quicker slowly you know figure out what parts works where and whatnot and 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 you'll be surprised you'll be surprised you'll start you'll start getting it you'll start getting the hang of it it's fun it's more fun to quick mix because you're always doing something you're not just sitting there making hand hearts while you're waiting for the third verse you know what i mean like it's more to do and it's highly, 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 highly effective. Highly effective. Trust me. Just trust me. I don't care what area you're in. It's all about, it, it, if, it, every area is different, but if you're in the Midwest or something, you just got to know what parts of the song people like. I'm sure there's plenty of songs you play in the Midwest that they only like one part of. Just play that one part. And, and, and I'll say this before I, you know, put, put a, put a bow on this conversation. Um, more and more I get couples that ask me if I play full songs. It is a very common question that couples asked the last couple of years. 
literally I'll be, I'm meeting with them. Oh, we just want to ask you a question. So when you DJ, do you play like the whole song or they literally ask that? Because they go to some weddings and they watch the song go all the way through. And these non-DJ, non-musician, just regular folk people identify that, you know, it would be a lot better if they didn't play this song all the way through. I've heard this from dozens of couples. Dozens, not one or two, dozens. Non-DJ, regular folk. If regular people are identifying it, it's a thing. It really, really, really does matter. And it's a part of my sales pitch. And I tell couples that. And you know what? And it's one of those things where like I'm not embarrassed. I'll say, listen, and just so you know, when I mix, I generally just play the best parts of every song. Like, so I don't play whole songs. I mean, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, I just play the best parts of every song and I keep it pushing. I just want to, you know, I want to, you know, create the, the, the most hype and fun environment. I want to keep people, I want people to sing as many songs as possible. Like, I don't want to just play like 40 songs on that. I want to play as many as possible. So I always just play the good parts and I keep it, you know, keep it moving. And you know, if there's ever a couple that I said that to and they're like, ah, well, we don't want that. Then I'm definitely not their DJ, <laughs> you know, but like I say that and, and it's my, one of my selling points and it works because there are still a lot of DJs that don't do this. So, you know, if you're one of them, please consider what I'm saying. Please just, just think about it, slowly implement it, you know, try it out here and there, you know, music, you know what you're doing. Just, just, just try it out and you'll be pleasantly surprised at your results. Trust me.